In this video, I'll share how I've been knitting a double-sided twisted rib for the turtlenecks of several of my reversible sweaters. I used Italian cast-on method for the edge. Here I used two different yarns, also double-sided twisted rib and the Italian cast-on. This edge is very stretchy and it's great for the turtleneck. This is not a sweater. The yarn here is much more rustic. Also the Italian cast on. And one more example, double-sided twisted rib and Italian cast on. I think it's especially great for the hats where the reversible ribbing makes it easy to adjust the size of the brim to make it wider or more narrow. So I originally filmed everything when I was making these two hats, but this yarn is so very heavily textured that when I checked the result it was very hard to see the stitches, so I had to redo the video. And in such cases, white cotton is always to the rescue. It has a great stitch definition and I hope you'll be able to see all the details. So in the following tutorial I'll be making this sample starting with the Italian cast on in the round using magic loop. I'll show my technique of completely eliminating the cast on jog and in the end we'll show two different methods of invisibly weaving in the yarn tails for both the single color yarn and for the stripes. I filmed all the steps from start to finish, all tips and tricks, and I hope you will find this helpful. For my sample, I'm going to use this thick cotton. It's a runaweight, and I tested and found that for a regular non-twisted rib, I would use 3.25 mm or US 3 needle size usually. but the twisted rib is much tighter that's why i will not be using this needle size but will use a bigger size 3.5 millimeter or us4 again because the twisted stitch rib is and especially the double-sided one is much more tight so i could probably even use 3.75 millimeters so all this was determined by swatching and also by swatching, I found that for casting on and for the first row, I will use 2.75 mm or US2 needle size to avoid a flared edge. And later on, I will need a tapestry needle to hide the yarn tails. For my sample, I will cast on 70 stitches. To measure the length of yarn, I wrap the yarn tail around the needle 35 times which is one half of this amount. Now I have the yarn tail for 35 stitches and I need 70. I take the yarn off the needle and double up the length. Plus 15-20 centimeters or 6-8 inches extra for the comfortable length of the yarn tail. So here is where my first stitch is going to be. I place the yarn on my left hand. My index finger goes under the working yarn and my thumb under the yarn tail. My first stitch will be a purl stitch without a knot. This casting on is jogless, so if necessary you can later move the beginning of the round by one stitch. I place the right hand needle tip onto the yarn and make a twist like this. Next stitch is a knit stitch under the tail, over the working yarn and turn. Purl stitch under the working yarn, over the tail. Again, knit stitch 
under the tail, over the working yarn, and turn. Purl stitch under the working yarn and over the tail. Knit stitch under the tail, over the working yarn, and turn. Purl stitch under the working yarn and over the tail. Knit stitch under the tail, over the working yarn, turn. Purl stitch under the working yarn and over the tail. I have two, four, six, eight, nine stitches. They are paired together and easy to count. The pearl stitches look like they have a bump. The 10th stitch is a knit stitch, again under the tail, over the working yarn, turn. And the knit stitches look like a horseshoe or like an incomplete circle. If you happen to cast on a very large number of stitches, it might be helpful to place a very thin marker like this one after every 10 stitches. And I will continue. Pearl stitch. Knit stitch. Pearl stitch. Knit stitch. Pearl stitch, knit stitch, pearl stitch. So this marker can be placed after every 10 stitches. So I have here 10 stitches and then 2, 4, 6, 7, 8 stitches. 9 and 10. I can place another marker here or for a smaller project I can continue without the marker. Here how I place another one. I hold the stitches with my left hand to secure them and place my second marker. And again, continue. 68, 69, and 70. I have now 70 stitches. My last stitch is a knit stitch. Before moving to the next step, I hold the last stitches to secure them with my left hand. The first row will not be in the round, and the stitches will be regular, not twisted. I have cast on 70 stitches, and after this I do not yet join in the round. I will work one regular ribbed row in the opposite direction, using the same needle size. I still hold the last stitches securely, and carefully turn my work clockwise. like this and now continue holding the last stitches with my right hand. The yarn tail comes to the front and the working yarn is behind my work. My left hand now holds the last stitches again and this is my yarn tail. Next I take the right hand needle tip and begin the first row. Wrap the yarn tail around my ring finger. My first stitch is a pearl stitch. I insert the right tip under the working yarn into the pearl stitch. 
slip it off and move under the working yarn like this and right away knit the following knit stitch from right to left now the stitches are secure and i can release the yarn tail and continue in the first row the pearl stitches are worked as usual like this and also in the first row if we look closer at the knit stitches that's the knit stitch they're looking to the right so they have a right turn and this is not a twisted row yet so in order not to twist them i will knit them from right to left or through the front and again the pearl stitches are placed as usual so i purl them in the usual way knit stitch again is facing right this is the front of the stitch and i knit it from right to left or through the front pearl stitch as usual and from time to time i bring the stitches closer to the tip of the left hand needle and at the same time straighten them out by moving the bumps down knit stitch from right to left purl stitch as usual and move the stitches along the needle tip bring the stitches on the left closer to the tip and continue knit stitch from right to left here i have my marker which i can now take off my last three stitches knit stitch from right to left purl stitch as usual and the very last knit stitch i will work from left to right because i want to give it an extra twist for a neat corner so i will work it from left to right like this i just finished the first regular ribbed row after casting on before connecting in a circle i will move my work all the way from right hand needle tip to the left one so i'll try to show i turn it and push all the stitches from one end of my circular needle to the other end and bring them a little bit closer to the tip So that's the yarn tail on the left needle tip this is the working yarn it starts from here before joining my work in the round i'm going to first change the size of my right hand needle tip to the ribbing size which as i previously determined was 3.5 millimeters or us4 for this yarn
and for the left hand middle tip I'm keeping the small size for now. I'm going to prepare for the magic loop. So first I will straighten the stitches, making sure the custom edge is looking inside the circle. I bring the two ends of my work together like this and I want to find the approximate center of my row somewhere here preferably before a knit stitch so this is a knit stitch and this is where I'm going to pull out the cable making sure that it's the cable of the right hand needle tip So there it is. I need a relatively small loop for the first loop of magic loop. Again, making sure my stitches are not twisted. And again, I bring the two ends together. So I check again that all my stitches are not twisted. The cast on edge is looking inside this circle. Then bring the yarn tail to the front for convenience and the working yarn behind my work. It's very important to make sure that the stitches are not twisted because after this it cannot be undone. Everything looks good and I'm ready to connect in a circle. Next is connecting in the round and I will start twisting both knit and purl stitches. I'm going to connect in a circle and from now on, my right hand needle tip is of the bigger size, the size that I chose to use for the double sided twisted ribbing. My first stitch is a purl stitch and I will twist it. I insert the right tip through the back of the stitch, take it off the left tip, turn it clockwise and return onto the left tip and purl. Here it's very important to tuck the working yarn to tighten this area. My knit stitches are now positioned in a regular way. They are facing left. So to twist them, I knit them through the back loop. Again, twisted purl stitch. I slip it off, turn it clockwise. and purl. Knit stitch again is facing left so I work it through the back loop to twist it clockwise. Purl stitch I slip, turn and purl. Knit stitch, knit through the back loop. Purl stitch, slip, turn, and purl. Knit stitch, knit through the back loop. So the stitches are twisted and on the other side the same, they look the same, twisted stitches on both sides. So I will continue until the change of a point. 
Here I reached the changeover point of my magic loop. Again, knit stitch, twist it through the back loop. Pearl stitch, slip, turn, and pearl. Now I'm turning the work around and to continue using magic loop I'm going to pull the cable of the left hand needle tip in and pull out the right hand needle tip. Tuck in the left hand needle tip to bring the stitches closer together so I have again two loops of magic loop and for convenience at this changeover point I like to turn the work a little bit like so so it's easier to continue Again, knit stitch through the back loop. Slightly tighten here at the changeover point and the pearl stitch slip, turn and pearl. Again, knit stitch through the back loop and pearl stitch slip turn and pearl I'm going to continue until the end of the round here I'm at the end of the round this is my last pearl stitch slip, turn, and pearl. And the last knit stitch, knit through the back loop. So I finished the first round of the twisted double-sided rib. Again, I turn my work around to continue using magic loop. Left hand needle tip goes in. The right one comes out. These are the two loops of magic loop. And all the following rounds, I will continue twisting both knit and pearl stitches. So this is how it looks, the Italian cast on edge and the twisted stitches. And here is another tip. I prefer to continue using the right hand needle tip and the left one of the two different sizes because it's the right hand needle tip that determines the size of the stitches. The left tip is only there to hold the stitches and to bring them closer. So it's much more convenient to use the two sizes. There is more room to insert the right tip. But if desired, of course, the left tip can be changed to a bigger size as well. I will work a few more rounds and then show how to completely eliminate the cast on joke and how to invisibly weave in the yarn tail both vertically and horizontally. This is the cast on joke and I'm going to make it disappear. To the right of the yarn tail there is this half stitch. I go through the stitch back to front like this and pull the yarn tail through. Then 
turn the work around and again to the right of the yarn tail there is another half stitch I go through that stitch front to back and right away back to front through the stitch on the left and pull the yarn tail through making sure it's not too tight and that's it straighten it up a little bit so this is the right side there is no jog now if a pattern calls for it the beginning of the round can be moved by one stitch so it starts with a knit stitch this is cotton so to make it completely perfect i might want to straighten up this stitch a little bit so now it looks very very nice and it is completely jogless to weave in the yarn tail i could go the usual way around one side of the stitches something like this So if I continue doing it the same way, then the edge here looks too thick because my yarn tail is very thick. So instead, I prefer to split the yarn tail in two even parts or more or less even parts. If it's a four ply yarn, I could do two and two threads or here in this case with cotton, I have four and four or with an uneven number, I can do three and four and so on so here i already split the yarn tail and i'm going to show how i will weave it in in different directions so first i will go vertically along the column weaving in around the left legs of the stitches these are the left and right legs so I will go around the left legs, the longer legs. And I make sure that, especially the first two stitches, I don't tighten the yarn tail too much. so that the stitches look even and sometimes I can do two at once like this to speed up the process And the other half of the yarn tail I will do differently. Technically speaking, I could go around the right leg of the same column. Or I could go sideways into the next column but I find that the neatest way to do it is to move to the other side of my work like that through the first stitch of the knit stitch column now 
Now I'm on the other side and I'm still at the level of the cast on stitches, which is very convenient. And I go left to right or back to front into the stitch on the right to move my yarn tail to the knit stitch column on the right. And I will weave in around again the long legs of the knit stitches in this column. And again, I can do two at the same time. And two more. The slightly bent tip of my tapestry needle really helps here. So this is the look. And what I like about it is uh, that you can't really tell that this knit stitch column is much thicker than the rest of the knit stitch columns. So it's the most invisible way. I included this part because I wanted to show what happens if I use, for example, a combination of two different yarns. This is the turtleneck of an actual sweater that I'm working on and here I'm using one strand of very fine my hair and also uh, fingering weight merino yarn. It has four strands so I already split it into two and I will first weave in one half of my merino yarn tail with the fine thread of the mohair. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with my sample. So I will weave in around the long legs of the twist knit stitches. I'm trying not to split the yarn because I have here more hair and merino. So making sure that it looks neat. I didn't do here two stitches at a time because I didn't want to accidentally grab the wrong strand. So this is how it looks. And I can continue until I run out of the yarn tail. So I did one half of the yarn tail here. This is the knit stitch column all the way up and that's the leftover of the yarn tail. And I will later on do the rest of the weaving with a hook. But for now, just wanted to show the end result. The knit stitch column looks very neat. It doesn't stand out and I'm going to do the similar thing with the other half of the yarn tail and I'm going to go again to the other side of my work through the first stitch here like this because I think it looks the neatest So 
So here I'm on the other side. I make sure I don't tighten too much here. And I will move to the right, back to front through the first stitch in the cast on row. And again, move up around the longer legs of my twisted knit stitches. This half of the yarn tail is without more here, so it's a little bit easier to work because I don't have to worry about uh, two different strands of two different yarns. So this is a close-up view. The knit stitch column again looks neat and it doesn't stand out from the other knit stitch columns. This is the knit stitch column where I was weaving in the yarn tail. And it looks very neat. This yarn that I used for this sweater is uh, non-felting. It's a very smooth merino yarn and a very fine strand of mohair. So if I work with this uh, kind of yarns that are non-felting, in the future what I would do differently, I would uh, leave a much longer yarn tail so that I can weave it in all the way to the end and even to the right. Especially it might be very important for double-sided or reversible sweaters. Because right now, as it is, my yarn tail is going to last only up to here. And with this uh, non-felting yarn, there is a small chance that this little tip may jump out of the knit stitch column and show. So in the future, I'm going to leave a much longer yarn tail. So it can go up and to the side and be much more secure. For the stripes, I also split the yarn tail into two strands and I will weave them in sideways because if I do this vertically along the knit stitch column, then the two different colors will show. First, I want to step away from the casting edge by a couple of stitches. So I weave in the yarn tail around the long legs of the knit stitches. One. And two. Next step. I will go around this stitch. This knit stitch is twisted. So to go around it, I go first under the long leg. Then along the short leg behind both legs of a stitch above. and return along the long leg of my stitch, going into the stitch in the round below, and to the other side of my work. Turn my work around, and continue weaving in, moving to the left. Now on this side, my yarn tail is coming out of a purl stitch. The knit stitch starts from here, goes this way, makes a twist, and continues that way. I will follow the same movement. 
I go under the right leg of the stitch below, pull the yarn tail through, continue outlining my stitch and turn back behind both legs of the stitch above. and return along a short leg and into the stitch below. And to the other side of the work. So I repeated the twist of the knit stitch. And I will continue moving in the same direction. Here again, my yarn tail is coming out of a purl stitch. The yarn goes from here this way, makes a twist and continues that way. I go under a stitch above, under the long leg of my stitch, pull the yarn tail through, continue outlining my stitch and turn back behind both legs of the stitch below. and return along the long leg and into the stitch above and to the other side of the work. So I wove in one half of the yarn tail in this direction. Now I will weave in the other half in the opposite direction. To make it look very neat, I first will move the yarn tail to the other side of my work. I go through the cast on stitch and pull the yarn tail to the other side. And we'll continue going this way. Turn my work the right side up. Here again I will first move the yarn tail a little bit away from the cast on edge, just about this much. So again I go behind the right leg of this cast on stitch, pull the yarn tail through, and now I am at this knit stitch column and I continue to weave in around the long legs of the stitches. Two, three stitches. And now I'm going to continue this way. I will go around this stitch. First under the long leg of my stitch. Back under both legs of the stitch below. and return along the long leg and into the stitch above and to the other side of the work. Continue 
continue on this side. This is the beginning of a knit stitch and the knit stitch goes this way, turns and continues to the other side. So I go under the short leg of the stitch below, outlining my stitch, I return under both legs of the stitch above and along the short leg of my stitch go through the stitch below to the other side of the warp like this. I'll show one more time. My yarn tail is coming out of a purl stitch. The yarn goes from here, this way, makes a twist and continues that way. I go under a stitch above, under the long leg of my stitch, Then again follow my stitch and go back behind both legs of the stitch below. And return along the long leg and into the stitch above. And to the other side of the work. And on the other side, I'll show one more time. This is my stitch. It's going this way. I go under the short leg of the stitch below. Return behind both legs of the stitch above. and go along the short leg of my stitch through the stitch below to the other side so this is the result it is identical to the double-sided twisted trip in both appearance and in function it's as stretchy and there are no bulky knit stitch columns. And also the cast on job has completely disappeared. This is how it looks in a turtle neck of an actual sweater. So no cast on job. The yarn tail color is well blended into the stripes and the ribbing stays very stretchy. Here I have different stripes. There is a narrow stripe of this honey colored yarn and the yarn tails of this yarn from both casting on and when I change the colors I wove in sideways. And then when I switch to the gray yarn, because the gray section is much larger, the gray yarn tails I wove in vertically. So here I used both techniques, vertical and horizontal. I hope this was helpful and you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.